Welcome to Module 9 of Statistical Molecular Thermodynamics. So this module will follow in style the first eight modules of the course. It's not designed to be used organically on the Coursera platform, but it will continue to involve video lectures and embedded self-assessments, which will be done without using the learning platform, but as exercises to help cement the concepts within the lecture. So this lecture, beginning Module 9, will focus on phase equilibria and phase diagrams. So what you're looking at here is a phase diagram, and it indicates the equilibrium phase of matter of a pure substance. Given the specification of a pressure, so here we have on the ordinate pressure, and on the abscissa, temperature. And the combination of a temperature and pressure is called a state point. So we can just triangulate, if you like, a given temperature and pressure. And if it's uh, 260 K, it looks like here, and 50 Tor, we would predict that this substance, whatever it is, is a solid. On the phase diagram are certain curves, and these are called coexistence curves. These indicate the equilibrium coexistence of multiple phases, thus, Along the curve at this point, liquid on the left and gas on the right, both gas and liquid are present at that given temperature and pressure state point. There is finally a point called the triple point, which is the precise state point, the single temperature and pressure, at which all three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, simultaneously coexist at equilibrium. So that phase diagram is actually for the substance benzene. And one often sees phase diagrams not only in the form we saw on the last slide, which is shown here at the left in panel A, but instead of plotting pressure as P, in this case in units of Tor, which is short for Torricelli, uh, using instead the logarithm of the pressure. And obviously with the logarithm of the pressure, we can cover a much greater range of pressures in, in a single plot. Uh, and you'll notice that what happens when you use the logarithm of the pressure is that it changes the curvature of some of the coexistence curves. It doesn't have a big effect on the solid liquid. That still looks a bit like a line, and we'll understand that a little bit better as we go further. But uh, one should just get used to the idea that one may see it presented in either of these two formats. So, so at this stage, let's uh, pause for a moment a self-assessment. And in particular, the self-assessments that will proceed for the rest of the course are not using the Coursera software per se, which flies in some radio button options. Uh, these are designed a bit more like just uh, do them at the desk, homework problems. And what I'd recommend at this stage is you pause the video, think about how to do the problem, make an attack on the problem, restart the video, and then you'll see the explanation for the self-assessment to follow. So here is the explanation on this self-assessment. And I don't want to spend time sort of reading what's on the page. These are designed to be reasonably explanatory. So instead, what I'd recommend is you can, again, pause the video, look at it, make sure it makes sense to you, and then continue with the new material. OK, so let's take a look in more detail at some of these phase diagrams. And now let's focus on a, an interesting substance, which is carbon dioxide. And so many of you may have seen and experienced carbon dioxide in its solid state, which is called dry ice. And you're familiar with the sublimation of dry ice, namely that uh, the carbon dioxide goes from the solid phase directly to the gaseous phase at ambient temperature and pressure at, at which we exist, which is about 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure. And so if we look at this, uh, at this phase diagram for carbon dioxide, and you see that it's in pressure units of atmospheres, and I've drawn a brown line here at about one atmosphere, what you see is that it intersects the coexistence curve between solid and gas. And so as a result, that is the phase transition that occurs if at one atmosphere we raise the temperature from a very low temperature up to a higher temperature. It's right at this temperature, which looks to be about, oh, maybe 
200 Kelvin, more or less. There would be a transition from solid directly to gas, and that is called sublimation. Uh, if we want it to melt and go from a solid to a liquid, we would have to raise the pressure above the triple point, and the triple point is at 5.11 atmospheres, so that's a, a well-known quantity for carbon dioxide. And thinking a bit more about these coexistence curves allows us to express something known as the Gibbs phase rule. And so the phase rule says that the number of degrees of freedom you have with respect to your system is F, F is the number of degrees of freedom, equal to three minus the number of phases that are present. And so the degrees of freedom themselves can be pressure and or temperature. So if you have a single phase, solid, liquid, or gas, then your degrees of freedom would be three minus one. You have two degrees of freedom. You can have different pressures and temperatures for that phase. On the other hand, if we're at the triple point, for example, where we have solid, liquid, and gas, then the number of phases present is three. There are no degrees of freedom at all. That occurs for a set pressure and temperature, and you can't control it. It just depends on the substance. And then finally, in those cases where we have two phases present and not the third, the degrees of freedom will be three minus two. So you can either adjust the pressure or the temperature and have those two phases remain present, but you can only adjust one or the other, and you will follow the coexistence curve when you do that. So for instance, if I'm here on the liquid gas coexistence curve, if I choose to raise the pressure, so that would be going upward, if I want the gas to stay there, I also have to increase the temperature in order to stay on that curve. If I just go straight up, I'll compress all my gas into a liquid, and there will be no gas left. And so the coexistence curves, in essence, describe the pressure dependence of a phase transition. So they tell you how must the temperature adjust in order to maintain the two phases as I adjust the pressure, or vice versa. I could adjust the temperature and watch what happens to pressure. And so this, uh, this change in the boiling behavior, that would be a liquid going to a vapor, or in the melting behavior, that's a solid going to a liquid, and we could also talk about sublimation, although that's a, a little less common. As a function of temperature, of course, we can plot that. So here, for instance, again, for the substance benzene, are shown a liquid vapor coexistence curve in temperature and pressure space, and also a liquid solid coexistence curve. And one of the things to notice is the rather different scales on the pressure axis on the abscissa. So on the vapor liquid, these are in units of tor. And if you recall, there's 760 tor in an atmosphere. So the leftmost structure here covers about three atmospheres. On the other hand, the, on the right side, where we see the temperature of fusion for the melting of benzene changing as a function of pressure, now instead of covering only three atmospheres, we cover 10,000 atmospheres. So it takes a considerably larger pressure change to affect melting than it does to affect boiling. Right, and this, uh, again, just to give you a feel in pressure units, so one tor is one 760th of an atmosphere, and it's also equal to, in the SI units of pressure, 1.33 millibar. So 1.33 times 10 to the minus three bar. Uh, it does turn out that if you multiply 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3 times 760, you get a, num a number that is very, very close to an, a thousand, which is an atmosphere. So a bar differs from an atmosphere by only 1%, which is sort of the worst case scenario. That means that people can be sloppy and figure they're only off by 1%, uh, and that sadly happens a fair amount. But just you know, keep track of units as one needs to do. So as is shown then in the, uh, in the diagram here, if we were to look at one atmosphere for benzene, the boiling point just reading up here turns out to be 80.1 degrees Celsius. And if we drop the pressure to 500 torr, which is right here, we would read off a boiling point of 67 degrees. So lower the pressure, lower the boiling point. Uh, there are some nomenclature details. When you talk about the boiling point at one atmosphere, that is formally known as the normal boiling point, whereas the boiling point at one bar 
even though that pressure only differs by 1%, is the standard boiling point. So just a nomenclature issue to keep track of. Meanwhile, if we go and look at the pressure effects on melting, at one atmosphere, the melting point of benzene is 5.5 degrees Celsius. So that's the normal melting pressure, melting point, because it's at one atmosphere. If we increase the pressure by 34 fold, so 34 atmospheres, it raises the melting point by only a single degree, 6.5 6 degrees Celsius. So that slope, if you like, is relatively small, 0 0.0293 degrees Celsius per atmosphere. Uh, it's, it's not terribly sensitive. Uh, and again, the same nomenclature issue for melting point. So that uh, completes what I want to say about phase diagrams and the interpretation thereof, and a little bit about the pressure and temperature dependence. In the next video, we're going to focus in on a particularly important substance and its phase diagram, namely water.